Hello and welcome to my playthrough of Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. Uh, this game originally came out on the uh, PSP in Japan uh, and then was ported over to North America and Europe. Uh, this is the Steam PC port of the game and uh, I have to say from what I have saw it's pretty good. Um, the music which you can hear going on right now um, it's the same as what I heard in the PSP, so I don't know if any visual enhan well, sound enhancements have been made aside from the uh, obviously you know, like upscaling and changing bit rates. What do I know? I haven't ported a game before. Anyway, let's get started. Uh, I wish I could play in Japanese. I thought this was going to go kind. Uh, for the sake of this, I'm going to uh, just read over the massive high school towers over all the uh, massive high school towers over all the other buildings in this bustling urban area. It's like the school stands at the center of the entire world. Hope's Peak Academy. It brings in top students from every field imaginable. A government-funded school of privilege. They say that if you come here and manage to graduate, you'll be set for life. With hundreds of years of tradition, it sends the cream of the crop into the workforce every year. It was built to raise hope in the nation's future, which makes Hope Speak a pretty fitting name. There are two things you need to attend this school. One, you have to already be attending high school. 
too. You have to be the very best at what you do. No ordinary student could enrol here. The only way in is if you're scouted by the school itself. And standing there at the gate of the ultimate school filled with the ultimate students was me. Before we go any farther, I guess I should introduce myself. My name's Makoto Naegi. Uh, in the uh, Japanese uh, port of the game, which I uh, played on PSP emulator. Um, don't worry, I do own the game, so that's all fine. Um, it was done in Japanese voiceover, obviously. Uh, so for the rest of the game, I'm just going to let the characters speak unless there's no speech going on. As you can see, nothing but a hopelessly average high school student. Average on the outside, average on the inside. I really don't have much going for me when it comes to grades, special abilities, even personality. I mean, yeah, I have hobbies and stuff I like to do, but it's not like I'm a psychic or mutant or whatever. Like, if you ask me what my favourite song was, or my favourite movie or TV show, that would just be whatever's most popular at that particular moment. Even among the average, I'm completely average, so I can't even say I'm your everyday hero type. That's just who I am. Anyway, I figure it's always good to introduce yourself right off the bat. But you know, if I have any kind of strong point, so to speak, I'd say a little more gung-ho than other people. I mean, look at me, I'm completely ordinary, but still, here I am, standing in front of the anything but ordinary hopes but peak academy. I still can't believe I'm standing here. I wonder if someone like me can survive in a place like this. It's got this overwhelming presence, like it's trying to swallow me whole. There's no wonder I would feel that way. What you have to understand is... Well, let me just tell you about the preparation I did last night to get ready for today. Discount for champ. Hope's Peak only invites those students who are the truly elite in their field. It's such a popular topic, there are threads online dedicated to talking about the school's attendees. So, to prepare, I looked up some of those threads, and all I saw was talk about ultimate students, who earn way beyond your average high schooler. For example, one incoming student is the ultimate pop sensation. I guess she's a high school girl who's also the lead singer for a pop group famous all over the country. There's also the ultimate baseball star. He was the cleanup hitter for the national high school champs. Pro teams already had their eyes on him. Then there's the ultimate fashionista. She's been on the cover of tons of fashion magazines. She's what every schoolgirl wants to be. Oh, and they mentioned the ultimate biker gang leader too. The scary thing is, he's the de facto leader of every biker gang in Japan. Gangs everywhere love the guy. On top of that, there's the ultimate martial artist, the ultimate fanfic creator, the ultimate gambler, the ultimate swimming pro, the ultimate programmer, the ultimate clairvoyant, and then some. Reading that made me realise how totally powerless I was. It was the country's finest, top to bottom. I felt like a tame little house cat who'd wandered into a pride of lions, but still, there was something I couldn't stop thinking about. You see, there were a few students who I couldn't find any info on, no matter how much I looked. With all those ultimate students, I'm the only one without any kind of worthwhile talent. But then, what about those other new students who didn't seem to pop up anywhere? Could they just be average students like me, without any talent or anything? That kind... that thought was kind of encouraging. I mean, I know I don't have much in the way of personality, but beyond that, there's an even bigger issue. Uh, sorry, I... I'm just gonna jump cut back to that. Okay, we're back to where we were, if not maybe a few lines behind. Uh, sorry about that, apparently B button skips dialogue. But beyond that, there's an even bigger issue. How did such an unbelievably average student like me get picked to come to this ultimate high school? I mean, I guess there is a reason. You just have to take one glance at the acceptance letter they sent me to see why. 
he recently held a lottery to select one ordinary student to attend our school. As a result, you have been selected, and we invite you to join us as the ultimate lucky student. It's spelled out plain as day, we got invited by pure luck. Honestly, I probably would have been better off just declining their offer. After hearing how graduating was a guarantee for success later in life, I just couldn't say no. But then, actually standing there in front of the school, I started to feel lost like I didn't belong there. I could feel myself losing my nerve. But still, I can't just stand here in front of the gate forever. Frozing in place, murmuring to myself, I looked down at the acceptance letter clutched in my hand. It said there'd be a meeting for all incoming students in the main hall at 8am. The meeting still isn't for a while, but... I should probably just head in. Yeah. Yeah, let's do this! I gathered up all my determination and tried to act like I've done this a million times before. And I took my first step towards the main hall. This is where we're supposed to meet, right? I guess I'm the first one here. This really has a good clock over in the corner. It says it's 7.10am. The meeting doesn't start until 8 o'clock, so there's still a full 50 minutes left. It makes sense nobody else would be here yet. I was so wound up I got here way too early. I have plenty of time for the meeting. Just standing around waiting isn't exactly... I should take a look around this school. Maybe that helped me calm down a little. I am a student here now, so there shouldn't be any problem with me having a look around, right? It helped me kill some time, if nothing else. Trying to play cool, I took my first step into Hope's Peak Academy. It was also my first step towards starting a new life at a new school. At least, that's what I was hoping for. What the... But the instant I took that first step forward, my view became warped, twisted. It was like some kind of delusion melting away and mixing together into something else. Spinning, mixing, melting away, then spinning again. And the next moment, everything went black. That was how it all began, and how life as I knew it came to an end. At that point, I should have realised. The reason I was brought to Hope's Peak Academy wasn't because I had ultimate good luck, or so I could experience ultimate despair. Oh cool, it's like the PSP saving system. I guess it's going to be VO from now on. Mm -hmm. I woke up with my head resting on top of a hard wooden desk. My body feels heavy. It's pretty normal for me to zonk off in the middle of some boring class or whatever, but... What was I doing asleep here just now? This isn't a classroom I've ever been in before. What the heck is going on? So, uh, the main portion of the game is done in this in this like, kind of view, so you have... So sometimes when you're in rooms, like, you can't walk around, like, you have a set viewpoint like this. And what you do is you aim your cursor at things, and it lets you, uh, investigate and stuff. Um, uh, when we're outside, uh, it'll be a different mechanic, but I uh, might as well just start looking at stuff for now. What the heck? In any normal classroom, that's where a window should be. Looks like some kind of metal plate has been bolted over it. If I were to knock on it... Yup, definitely metal. Thick, too. Very solid. Wait, that's not what matters here. More importantly, why are there metal plates over the windows? Is that a surveillance camera? It's a dangerous world we live in. I guess they have these to keep weirdos from just wandering in. Jeez, I can't believe it's already 8 o'clock. 
just after 7 when I first got here. Has it really been almost an hour since then? No, I'm keeping them out till last. There's a TV. The school is funded by the national government, so I guess it's not weird to have TVs in here. Something feels off. I wonder what it is. Oh, I don't know, probably the metal plates over the windows. Anyway, to the moment. That's the desk I fell asleep on. I can still see a line of drawer where I must have left there. I have to clean that up later. Hey, what's that on the desk? Orientation guide? Some kind of cheap looking pamphlet. There's some hand something handwritten on it. Next semester is about to start. Starting today, this school will be your entire world. What the hell? Is this someone's idea of a joke? Okay, let's see. So what might have happened is I got myself so wound up I passed down the main hall. And then someone carried me here? If that's true, it must mean this is the classroom inside Hope's Peak. Then if that's true. Raises more questions. This is all really strange. I mean, there's about plates covering the windows. It's like a prison or something. None of this makes any sense. I should probably head back to the main hall. It's already past the meeting time. There might be other students there by now. And you can always exit by pressing B, or you can press M on the door. Jeez, this hallway is kind of weird too. So it's getting stranger by the second. I honestly have no idea what's going on. Well, for now I'll just head to the main hall. Okay. Why for the map? Okay, so this part is done in third person. Well, not third person. First person, but you can walk about. So you can move left and right with the right stick to look left and right, up and down. You can move forward and backwards, but the thing is, if you want to turn left or right, you well, you can, but if you try to do it whilst moving, it gives you this weird kind of like turning, so you've got to do it, combine it with the other stick, and then you'll turn uh, much better, much faster too. Anyway, uh, I think there's... Um... Okay, so through there is the hotel. Not oh, the hotel, the dormitories. Hey? Okay. Yeah, they've changed a few things around. Um, so I've got to go. Uh, oh, I can't show you. I've got to go to the uh, top left where the uh, court is. But I want to try going towards the hotel. See what happens. Spare hotel? I guess it's a place where people stay overnight. But anyway, I um, need to get to the main hall. Okay, so it's going to prevent me from doing that. That was weird. Uh, this is the headmaster's office, I think. I wonder where this red door leads. I'm starting to feel sick standing here. Yeah, so Monokuma should be behind there. Spoilers, by the way, this obviously isn't a blind playthrough. Uh, I might as well just go to it. The main hall. That is, if I remember where to go. Yeah, there's definitely a few things been changed around. I think that's made it bigger. The gym. The handle doesn't move at all. Oh, fucking... <sighs> okay, that was where I was meant to go. Um... Oh no, I'm just an idiot. I forgot you need to meet and greet everyone. Well... <sighs> By the time I got back to the main hall, everyone else was already there. Whoa, hey! Another new kid? Huh? Then you guys are all... Yeah, we're all new here. Today's supposed to be our first day of class. So, counting him, that makes 15. 
Seems like a good cutoff point, but I wonder if this is everyone. Standing before me were the ultimate students that had been handpicked by the school. I looked around at everyone who'd gathered there, taking in their faces one at a time. I was just imagining it, I swear I could feel a kind of aura coming from each of them. Um, how's it going? My name's Makoto Nagi. Sorry I'm late, a bunch of stuff happened, and then all of a sudden I was just... asleep. Hmm? Whoa, you two? Hmm... Things just keep getting curiouser and curiouser. Mm-hmm. So strange. I declare beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is a strange situation indeed. Um, what are you talking about? I honestly have no idea what's going on right now. Got it! Just a moment. There's something else we must address. Listen to me! Makoto, your tiredness is unacceptable. Surely you were awake. Surely you were aware that the meeting was to start at 8am sharp. To be led on your first day is unspeakable. I must report you. You must accept your due punishment. What? What's your problem? It's not like he wanted to be late. He didn't have any control over it. That's right! Everyone, just calm down. Listen, why don't we all go around and introduce ourselves? Huh? The hell? There's no time for friggin' introductions. <laughs> maybe, but it may be good to at least find out who we all are before digging into the bigger problems here. I mean, how are we even supposed to talk to each other if we do not know each other's names? Yeah. That's a good point. Okay, so let's get introductions out of the way, then we can move on to whatever else. Sound good? I'm still totally lost, but I think it's best to just focus on getting to know each other for now. So I guess this is as good as a chance I'm, as I'm gonna get. I already looked everyone up on that Hope's Peaks Academy thread online, but... I still don't really know what kind of people they actually are. Time to find out. I'll start by talking to those five over there. So you've got to keep track of the, uh... well it isn't really that important, um, because the game sort of tracks it for you anyway, you just need to know what context to use it in uh, later on. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's start with getting all the uh, investigation out of the way. There's a TV. Uh, yeah, da -da -da -da. That surveillance camera has what looks like a gun attached to it. There's no way that's a real gun, right? Uh, I should say the same thing. Uh, lock box. A mailbox. There's nothing inside. Holy cows, what's this huge metal hatch? Looks like the kind of thing you'd see in a secret military base or something. This is the same hall I was in before, right? This door definitely wasn't here then, though. Okay, who should we start with? Let's start with the Otaku. I am Hifumi. But if you want to call me by my nickname... The Alpha and the Omega! I don't mind. Mm -hmm. By the way, how much do you know about the world of 2DR? World of 2D? <laughs> well, in that world, I am well known and supremely well regarded as the ultimate fanfic creator. Mm -hmm. I once sold 10,000 of my one of my fan comics at a school festival. The event has passed into legend. Hmm. Some of them didn't get it, of course, saying God tainted the event. How stupid can you be? That's too bad about them, but selling 10,000 copies like that is definitely pretty remarkable. However... The words of such idiots mean nothing to me. I am like Van Gogh, utterly unappreciated in my time. I am a soldier, serving night and day to destroy all minus preconceptions about fanfiction. I'm sure if you were to observe my work, Mr. Nagy, you would comprehend its greatness immediately. <laughs> For my work is filled with deepest meaning. What, what kind of meaning? Yes, indeed. It's about embracing our baser surges. I don't think I want to comprehend it. Yeah, he makes lemons. Yo, the name's Leon Kuwata. What's up? I recognize that name. He played for the National High School Champs as their cleanup hitter, the ultimate baseball star. And that superb athletic specimen is... You? Seriously? Huh? Huh? What's wrong? 
Nothing. I'm just surprised. I figured with you being the ultimate baseball star and all. Break. What? Were you expecting some kid with a shaved head? Shaved head? No, I was just expecting more of a, you know, sporty looking traditional baseball player type. I mean, when I found an article and picture of you online, that's how you looked then. <laughs> what? Aw oh, man, you found a picture of me playing baseball? Seriously? I hate that picture. This is not cool. This is so not cool. Seriously, I'm like mega embarrassed right now. I didn't have a choice, okay? Shame you had like that as part of national championship regulations. I mean, seriously? But now I refuse to cut my hair. I'm not gonna dye it back to normal either. Hey, listen. Actually, can I be totally honest with you? You know, I don't like baseball, like at all. I've never gone to a single practice. Also, I'm pretty sure that was Sonic just then. He's never practiced, and he was still his team star player. He's some kind of prodigy. Yeah. As soon as I got accepted here, I quit baseball for good. I have my own dream for the future. A dream for the future? My only path in life is getting into music. You can feel that star quality aura I have, right? You know what I mean. I'm going to be a singer. So all I need is a songwriter and someone in guitar, or a set. How cool is that? This new version of me that's chasing after my dream is like super cool to the max. Yep, he's definitely Sonic. Can't believe what I'm hearing. I never managed to hear something like that from a baseball all-star. I think I'll get all the uh, introductions out of the way, then uh, cut the episode. Uh, on to you. Hi, I'm Sayaka Maizono. I look forward to getting to know you. The way she moves is positively mesmerizing, and that pleasant scent I can't quite place. Sayaka Maizono. When I saw her name in that thread online, frankly I was pretty surprised. She's in a pop group famous all across the country. And she's their lead singer, as the ultimate pop sensation. She's in high demand to appear on TV and in magazines everywhere. Actually, that's not the only reason I was so surprised to find out she'd be going to this school. I'm sure she doesn't remember, but... Well, never mind. No matter how you slice it, she's really beautiful. Almost like a doll or something. I'm not a doll, you know. I'm alive. Huh? Did you hear me? I'm psychic. Huh? <laughs> Kidding. I just have really good intuition. She's a sharp one. Hey, um. Huh? Hey, by any chance? Now what? Huh? Yeah, it must be. I'm sure of it. Hey, Makoto, did. Just hold on. Jeez, you guys. How long are you going? Do you plan to waste our valuable time with this ridiculous back and forth? Um. Sorry, just got carried away, I guess. You hear me? Self-introductions are for introducing yourself, not bumbling through a bunch of idle chit-chat. Um, You're right. Sorry. Sorry, Makoto. We can talk about this later. It sounded like Sayaka really had something she wanted to say. It's not like we'll never see each other again. Like she said, we can talk later. On to you. Not that you'll remember my name anyway, but I'm Toko. Fukawa. Yeah, she wrote a novel when she was 10 that got everyone talking and launched her literary career. Then two years ago she released So Lingers the Ocean, a love story said to be her masterpiece. The book was such a hit with women that fishermen quickly shot to the top of every hottest men pole. Despite her age, she's won countless literary prizes, and all her books are instant bestsellers. Which is why she's come to be known as the ultimate writing prodigy. What else would you call such a young and talented author? But I figured she'd be a lovely dovey type, what with her masterpiece being a romance and all. What's your problem? What? It's not polite to stare, you know. Stop heck? staring at me like I'm some filthy creature. Filthy creature? No, I just thought... I know what you just thought. You just thought you've never seen such an ugly woman. You just thought it was so funny. No, that's not what I was thinking at all. I'm telling you. Don't bother trying to lie to me. I know it's true. 
Otherwise, you... I know you can't stand looking at me. Anyway... Whatever. I don't really care. I'm used to it. Wow, talk about an inferiority complex. I was way off of what a successful author would be like. And you. I'm Kiyotaka Ishimaru. I believe in bold simplicity. Let's work together on our educational crusade. Hello, good sauce. So that's Kiyotaka. According to what I saw about him on that thread, he went to a famous private school and won top honours every year. He's basically a flawless honour student. He's also known for the work he's done with his community's public morals committee. I say he respects rules above all else, earning him the title of Ultimate Moral Compass. Anyway, you could call me Taka. You said your name was Makoto Neegi, right? That's a good name. A strong name. You should thank your parents for giving you such an excellent name. You hear me? And to keep that name from losing its value, you must devote yourself every single day. Got it! Life is worth putting every ounce of effort into it, right? Right. This guy is kind of annoying. Okay, now to talk to those five people over there. Let's go in order of preference. By that I mean in order of who dies first. I'm joking. Name's Mondo Awada. Nice to fucking meet you. Hondo Awada, huh? Which means... He's the current leader of the largest biker gang in Japan. He's in respect, even awe from every gang in the country. He's the ultimate biker gang leader. Um... Nice to meet you too. Yo. Hell yeah. I better be careful around him. One wrong word and I could wake up at the bottom of the sea. Uh, uh, yeah. Hey ya! I'm Aoi Asahina, but my friends just call me Hina. Sup? Aoi Asahina? She's been rank breaking records in every competition since she's been in she's been in since elementary school. She's even been cho chosen as an upcoming Olympic cadet. She is, without a doubt, the ultimate swimming pro. A combination of her ability, appearance, and um, proportions has been widely discussed, widely discussed online. <clears throat> so, uh, what was your name again? Sorry, totally forgot. Makoto Naegi. <laughs> oh yeah, I knew it was something like that. No, not something like that. It is that. You got it. Sure, sure. Got it. Here, I'll hammer it into my brain right now. Yeah. Makoto Naegi. Makoto Naegi. She just kept repeating my name and moving her finger across her palm like she was writing something. What are you doing? Huh? You don't know? If you want to remember someone's name, you got to write it on your hand three times. I've never heard of that before in my life. Mm. Hey, by the way, how do you spell your last name? You spell it exactly like it sounds. Mm. Um... <laughs> well, I have no idea. <laughs> I'll just figure it out later and write it down. Okay. Anyway, glad to meet you. Sure, same here. Well, one thing I learned is she's totally easygoing and bursting with energy. Hi. Hi, I'm Junko Enishima. Charmed, I'm sure. Anybody would recognize this one. She's got more charm and presence than any high school girl in the country. She's the ultimate fashionista. I've seen her on tons of magazine covers, but... I feel like that doesn't quite match up to reality. What? Huh? Come on. Oh, are you talking about my cover photos and junk? <laughs> well, of course. That was a totally photoshopped. Photoshopped? Yeah, you know, edited to hell and back, with, like, computers and junk. Oh, so they aren't real. What can we do? Come on, don't act so surprised. You're gonna make me all depressed. Totally! It's totally normal these days to photoshop the crap out of cover photos. If you're surprised by that, you'd be totally blown away by a certain dangerous little diva of ours. <laughs> they make the eyes and junk look super big, and tweak the skin so it looks all ceramic and porcelain. 
Oh. So many dreams are getting crushed today. And you. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Chihiro Fujisaki. Sorry, I get kind of embarrassed whenever I introduce myself like this. <laughs> anyway, I hope we can get along. Same here, nice to meet huh? you. Huh? Maybe it's just my imagination, but have we met before? Um, I don't think so. We just met for the first time, which is why I said nice to meet you. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, good point. Sorry. You don't have to apologize for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chihiro Fujisaki is known for all the cutting-edge programs she's created. She's the ultimate programmer. She's also got that Tim and Little Bunny type thing going, which has endeared her to a legion of fans. Um... Hey, so listen. Uh, I'm sorry. Huh? What are you apologizing for now? Um... Well, just because you seem upset. You must be mad at me, right? No, not at all. I was just lost in thought about something. Huh? Uh, lost in full? Yeah, it had nothing to do with me being upset or anything. Thank you. Oh, that's good. I was afraid maybe you didn't like me. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm starting to understand why our fans are so into her. And you? Um, can I ask your name? My name is Kyoko Kirigiri. She's pretty tight-lipped, huh? Oh, but, you know, her name didn't show up anywhere in that Hope's Peak Academy thread. And I did see that there were students like me, ones who didn't have any real identity or purpose. Could this girl be one of them? Um, so what are you doing at this school? What? What's that supposed to mean? No, I just meant getting invited here means you're some kind of ultimate something, right? So what ultimate something are you? That doesn't matter. Why should I tell you? Huh? Well, I guess you don't have to tell me. <sighs> no, I don't have to tell you, so I'm not going to. Nothing about her turned up online, so I was thinking maybe she got picked by chance like me, but... Her face is like an iron mask. She doesn't want to tell me anything, no point in asking. This rather there are the only ones left. Ah, uh, we'll start with you. I am Sakura Ogami. Oh jeez, I must ask her if she was the guy. I doubt say something like that out loud as the day I get turned into a human meatball. Now I remember, she competed in a martial arts tournament in America and won, despite being a girl. She's the ultimate martial artist. She's fought in over 400 matches, and never lost a single one. But Fred also said a bit more about her. Some call her Ogre. Some even think she's the closest known relative to the primates, the famed missing link. Any incoming Keep Peak students are while well reading this, let me warn you right now. Keep Speak, Hope Speak, for fuck's sake. If you value your life, avoid her at all costs. Standing in front of her now, I don't think they were exaggerating about that. Hey! Hey, you! Uh, yes? It's up to attention without even realizing it. And she started to poke and prod at my body. Um, what are you? I see. Muscular quality and quantity is right around that of an extremely ordinary high school student. Hmm. Hmm, what a shame. Not fit as all to act as my training partner. I'm not sure that's such a shame for me. And we'll go with you. I do not think we have been introduced. I am Celestia Ludenberg. Celestia Luden... huh? <laughs> Ludenberg. It is my name, but if you don't mind, I will prefer you for you to call me Celeste. And um, you are Japanese, right? Huh? Of course, why do you ask? If you don't mind... Could you tell me your real name? 
<laughs> I don't know what you are talking about. Celestia Ludenberg is my real name. But as I mentioned, I would much rather you call me Celeste. She's polite but pretty forceful at the same time. I don't think she wants to say any more about it. I guess the rumours in that thread were right about her. The self-styled Celestia Ludenberg. She's the ultimate gambler who's never lost a bet. Other than her obvious love of gothic Lolita clothes, everything about her is wrapped in a veil of lies. They say she entered and won an underground gambling tournament, earning the title Queen of Liars. She totally cleaned out the other players, taking their live savings and saving, laughing as she did it. <laughs> I look forward to getting to know you better. <laughs> that smile is beyond deceptive. I'd better watch myself around her. I'm Yasuhiro Hagakure. Hero for short. Take it easy, yeah? I know I will. Yasuhiro Hagakure, known as Supernova in the psychic community, the trend-setting ultimate clairvoyant. Honestly, I don't really get all that fortune-telling stuff. It's pretty much beyond me. Still, I kind of am wondering if there's any truth to it. Could it be? Uh, okay, I give up. Huh? What happened? For serious? I saw it. I looked right at it. Seriously, I totally saw it. Saw so what? Hmm. A guardian angel of the crazy perm chasing after Bigfoot running off with a skyfish in its mouth. And that guardian angel is your guardian angel. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. But hey, we should grab some brewskis sometime and get real deep into Lemuria and its civilization. What? I'm not allowed to drink? We're in high school. You know? Oh, I'm actually 21. I've been held back a few times, see, and, well, it's a long story. A few times? Yeah, I bet that is a long story. And... Name's Byakuya Togami. Hi, uh, nice to meet you. It's the most half ass introduction I've ever heard. I think I just skipped it by accident. But there isn't really anything I can do about it. Even among the ultimate students, this one is special. Bayakuya Tagami is the heir apparent of his fi family's massive financial conglomerate. He's already started managing business operations, and his own personal assets are, well, vast. His title of ultimate affluent progeny is completely accurate. He's the definition of exceptional. That's everything I learned about him from that Hope Speak Academy thread online. Come on. We're done with the instructions, right? How much longer are you going to stand there? Go away, I'm sick of looking at you. Zora says to me, you and I will never stand on the same level. Like a king in training. And with that, all the introductions are done. Hmm, you have overall ultimate. You each have our own individual sort of, um, something. Hmm. Okay, time to get down to business. There's no time to stand around making friends like a bunch of delight baboons. Oh, that's true. I think someone said something about a bigger problem or something. What was that about? Um, listen. Well, you see... Uh, um... Makoto, you said a bunch of stuff happened and then you were just asleep, right? Well, the same is true for all of us. What? Seriously? I mean, seriously? Just after each of us got to the main hall, we lost consciousness. When we came to, we were somewhere here in the school. That's what happened to you, right? But that's just weird. That every one of us would get knocked out like that. Piece of shit! Exactly. That's why we're all freaking out. <clears throat> and that's not the only thing. You saw where all the windows in the classes were, right? But instead of normal glass windows, it was a bunch of big metal plates. What's that about? Are you for real? Plus, all the stuff's missing. Even my cell phone. Um. Yeah, you're right. I haven't seen my PDA anywhere either. Mm. And then there's a the main hall here. The front exit is completely blocked by some giant metal hatch. What does this mean? There wasn't anything like that when I first got here. What the heck? What's it doing there? Mm. Maybe we got caught up in some kind of like you know crime or something. Is it? Like, 
What? Like a kidnapping? Do you think maybe someone grabbed us and hauled us off and we're not actually at school? Hey, come on! Don't think like that. Cheer up! How else is all just part of the school's orientation procedure? You know? Yeah, I'm sure that's it. So I'm just gonna take it easy for a little bit. I see. Oh, so you think they wanted to do something to surprise us? What the hell? Huh? Well, if that's all it is, it's nap time for me. You know what I mean. I was up way too late last night, so I could use a little shut eye. I could feel everyone's tension evaporating. But then, it began. The voice seemed totally out of place. It was so playful, so completely unconcerned. I can help but feel a deep and nerving dread at the sound of it. It's like hearing someone laugh at the scene of an accident. Uh, to all incoming students, I would like to begin the entrance ceremony at... right now! Please make your way to the gymnasium at your earliest convenience. That's all. I'll be waiting. What the hell was that just now? Goodbye. Well then, if you'll excuse me. Hey! What, you just gonna take off like that? Could it be? Oh yeah, now I get it. This whole thing was just to get us all pumped for the entrance ceremony. <laughs> Man, thank god it was all a joke. I'd be totally freaked with this, were you? You know? Alright, guess I'll head out too. I wonder what they got planned for us next. <sighs> Damn, I was totally looking forward to that nap too. Why do I have to go and kill the mood? Huh? Wait for me, I want to go with you. <laughs> that is that then. I will see you all there. Anyway. Not that anyone cares, but I'm gonna go too. Everyone took off from the gym, but I was frozen where I stood. An uneasy feeling I'd had before. I couldn't get it out of my mind. It looked like I wasn't the only one. Uh, um. This... This doesn't seem right. This is bad. Yeah, that, that announcement was totally weird. However... Maybe, but just saying staying put doesn't mean we'll be safe. Besides, aren't you guys just a little bit curious to find out what's going on around here? I see. If we do not move forward, we learn nothing. The only choice is to push ahead. I guess she's right. But still, I'm kinda... No, really nervous. We don't have a choice. We have to go. But you said go to go to the gym, right? And I am going to end it here. I uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, first episode. Um, I'd like. Uh, I hope you uh, stay with me for the rest of the series. It's going to be kind of long. Um, I don't know how long this episode was, uh, but hopefully they should be shorter in future. Um, it's a really good game uh, to play and also to watch. Um, I remember watching someone else uh, play this game and then comparing it to my own playthrough, so I hope you do the same. Anyway, if you'd like to just leave a comment below about um, how this went or any suggestions, um, I'd be happy to reply. Anyway, thanks again and see you next time.